Hey, hey, feasters, and welcome to episode 79 of the Ask Rez podcast. I'm Jason, your host, or Rez, and I'm here answering your questions so that you can get past the bumps in the road to building a profitable freelance business. And if you're on Breaker, go ahead and leave me a message there. Or if you like this episode, go ahead and give it a heart. And today's question, what is the best way to attract larger clients is a question, well, I think a lot of us have asked in the past, right? Especially if you started out freelancing and you want to get those badge of honors, so to speak, right? I've had some really large clients over the years, companies like Canon, PGA, Gander Mountain, and they are amazing companies and the people were awesome to work with. The appeal of working with larger clients is that it's social proof, whether it's a logo on your website, chatting at an event, or during a sales call when you can actually convey that you've worked with these clients. When you are able to share with someone a recognizable name, there's an instant thought of, if you're good enough for them, then I want you for my project, or at least some level of comfort that you just didn't pop up yesterday. Attracting large clients is the same as attracting small clients. Know the problem you are solving for them. This is even more so in the case of attracting larger clients. Unless you're doing something extremely innovative and noteworthy, it's going to be hard to attract a large brand, mainly because they just search for what they need for their business and find something and move forward. Catching their eye is tough. They have very specific agendas and goals for every single year, and they will remain focused on that throughout the year. So you have to be very precise in what you can do for these types of clients so that they actually have the need when they actually have that need and go look for the solution to that need, you pop up. When I was working for some of these recognizable brands, I was doing so to solve a problem for two reasons. One, they didn't have the resources to handle the work or two, that they had the resources, but they were working on other things. A much more effective way to land larger clients rather than wait for them to come to you is to seek them out. Larger clients are much more difficult to nab, well, because they have layers and layers of people in their organization and getting in front of the right person can be much harder. Most of the times, smaller clients, you're working with the founder or the owner of the business. Now, depending on what you do for the larger clients, you need to find the appropriate person to get in front of. I want to give you two ways to do this. One, you can get, you can go to that organization on LinkedIn and find who that person is and see if you have any sort of connection to that person. This is probably the best way to get in front of them. Word of mouth is totally your friend here. If you know someone that works at that organization or company or knows someone who knows someone that works there, see if you can get an introduction to the person you need to talk to. Businesses, especially larger brands, are all about relationships. Larger organizations are innovative, but they still rely on the old school school business tactics, the good old handshake. Second thing, which I found really creative, was Ariel Vieira, I believe is his name, and I'll put his, his link in the show notes here, did something extremely creative to grab attention of larger brands that he wanted to work with. Ariel, if you're listening, I'd love to get you on Live in the Feast and unpack this tactic a little bit. But what he did was he creates these Facebook Live shows called Urbanist, and he does these Facebook lives where he takes you on a journey exploring cities of the world, but the back stories of these places. He wanted to work with certain brands and large pages on Facebook. Since he had built his business on Facebook and he knew the platform very well, he leveraged that power there and he bought ads and targeted the right person within those 
organizations, essentially, with his content. He didn't do the conventional pitch or sign up kind of ad. What he did was he just pushed his normal content in front of the likes of tourist boards, magazines, and admins of these Facebook groups. This way, he just started to become familiar to those people. And when the time was right for them, they would think of him and reach out to him. This is genius in my opinion because it's kind of like that old school TV commercial spot with a new school spin. As someone who's worked with both larger and smaller clients, I'd like to quickly share four things for you to keep in mind with this. One is you'll gain a whole bunch of knowledge, right? Remember working with a larger organization like that, you'll often chat with and meet other folks on the same project and gain insights and best practices from them. Number two, when working with larger brands, you'll find yourself having to fit into their business rather than the other way around. This necessarily isn't a bad thing, but it's different and may require a bit of a learning curve and adjustment to your workflow. You want to be mindful of that in regards to your pricing, which brings me to point number three. Most larger companies are used to hourly billing or a payment structure that's net 30, net 60, net 90. This is, means that you won't get paid until 30 days after you invoice them. If you've heard me for more than anything longer than a week, you know I'm not a fan of either of these models. Point number four, try to limit yourself to one large client at a time unless you have a team, especially a project manager. You'll need to follow their lead and fit into their environment. Essentially, you've become their employee. So if you're taking on multiple clients, you will be doing double or triple the amount of management and admin work. Remember that whole, I didn't switch to freelance because I wanted 10 bosses thing. It's a different mindset and a different game to play when you're working with larger brands and larger companies. So make sure you understand how to play that game at least a little bit. Make sure it's what you want too and that it aligns with why you started your own business in the first place. As someone who hasn't worked with larger brands in two years, I'm curious to know how you go and attract those larger brands and actually close those deals. Leave me a comment on Breaker and let me know. If you have a question, ask Rez, that's me, by leaving me a tweet, an email, or jump into Breaker, leave me a comment there. I would really appreciate it and I'll be happy to answer it for you. Until next time, it's your time to live in a feast.